I remember when I first got back into the game, I built a Sacred Beast deck. It was kind of just Crystal Beasts and trying to facilitate those for the Sacred Beasts and uh, really slow for today's standard, which is what I'm getting at. <laughs> So I went out and bought three of these Sacred Beast Structure Decks, and I'm going to unbox one of them in this video. We're just going to ah, rip right into it. Alright. The microphone. Anywho. Sorry, microphone. I'm sorry. So, we have the playmat. If I can ever get it open. I mean... It's pretty. I like it. Might go behind me. Who knows? It's not a bad mat. And we have the beginner's guide. We need that. Anywho. Uh, trying to figure out how to get in this thing where the tab is. Ah, oh, there we go. Found it. There we go. Alright. Rip. Tear. Dismember. Alright, so we have that, and Legacy of the Duelist, uh, I mean, it's okay gain. Uh, anywho, and Duel Links. Uh, three advertisements that I don't much care for. Anywho, uh, so we have that. Uh, that's a new monster, um, I mean, for the Sacred Beast archetype, uh, the, for the retrain of this guy. Clearly. <laughs> Anywho. So we have Uriah, Hamon, and Raviel. And we also have Armatile. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. Armatile? Armatile. That, yes. I, Anywho. Uh, Cerule Cerulean, Skyfire. Uh, it's a special summon of one... I, spell I can't talk, apparently, so ignore that. It's a special summon Hamun, Lord of Striking Thunder, using its own procedure. You can also use face down spells you control. Once per turn, while you control an attack position Hamun, Lord of Striking Thunder, you can negate any spell trap effect activated by your opponent. Then change one hormone Lord of Striking Thunder you control to defense position. And face up Uriah, Lord of Searing Flames, Hormone Lord of Striking Thunder, and Raviel, Lord of Phantasms, you control leave the field. You take no damage this turn. That's cute. And Hyper Blaze at the Continuous Trap. Uh, the special summon your okay, so it's basically the same thing as that first deck except for Uriah, so we're not gonna bother that effect. Uh once per turn when Okay. Ah, oh, I gotcha. Okay. Once per turn. You when an opponent what Once per turn when an attack is declared involving your Uriah, Lord of Searing Flames. You can send one trap from your hand or deck to the graveyard. Hand or deck to the graveyard. Its attack becomes that number of face up traps on the field and in the graveyard times a thousand for the rest of this turn. On the return, you can discard this one card out of one. Add to your hand or special summon one Uriah, uh, Hamon, or Raviel from your graveyard and run your summoning condition. That's exciting. I mean, that's not bad. It's just a trap and it's kind of slow because of it. Uh, anywho, uh, that's the fusion spell. I mean, basically, special summon uh, armor tile and then it you don't take damage. Uh, that's basically what it does. Uh, Chaos Core. What are you and what are you about? Uh, okay, so that's more... Okay. Uh, when either player activates a card effect 
the target of this card or when your opponent's monster targets it for an attack. Quick effect you can send uh, up to one of each Uriah, Hamun, or Raviol, and Raviol from your hand or deck, and or deck. And if you do, place one Phantasm counter on this card for each card sent to the graveyard. And if you place at least one, you take no damage this turn. You can only use this effect of Chaos Core once per turn. This card would be destroyed by Battle of Card Effect. You can remove one Phantasm counter from this card instead. That's cute. And that's... So here's the card that makes the deck kind of function. Uh, Dark Beckoning Beast. Okay, so before I read the effect, uh, I'm pretty sure everyone watching this video would know what it does. But anywho, I really want to point out the artwork. I really like how it kind of brings in all the uh, details from from uh, V3. So I think that's cute. Anywho. Uh, when this card is normal summon, you can add one Uriah, Hamun, or Reviol. Or one card that specifically lists any of those cards in its text from your deck to your hand, except Dark Beckoning Beast. You can only use this effect of Dark Beckoning Beast once per turn. During the main phase, you can normal summon one fiend monster with zero attack. In addition, okay, so that's cute. Uh, so yeah, that's the one that makes the deck function better. Uh, and then Dark Summoning Beast, Chaos Summoning Beast, actually. My apologies. Uh, you can tribute this card, special summon one Uriah, Hamun, or Reveal from your hand, ignoring its summoning condition. You can banish this card from the graveyard, add one Fallen Paradise from your deck to your hand. You can only use each effect of a Chaos Summoning Beast once per turn. Alright, and then here's Dark Summoning Beast, basically the same thing that this thing does, except it's either deck or hand, and you can banish it from the graveyard to add one of these three. So... Uh, Phantom Chaos, sure, uh, I have way too many of that. Uh, what are you, and what are you about? Uh, Bad Reloader. Uh, this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, sent two cards from me. Okay, no, let's not do that. <laughs> uh, Grave Squirmer. If this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, uh, okay, that's kind of bad. Uh, Rainbow Dark Dragon. Don't care. Don't care. I have a lot of you. Okay, we kind of need that. Uh, Puppet Master. I have a lot of you. Farfa. It's Farfa. Uh, the Fabled. Yeah. Danger. Chupacabra. Alright, so here's one of the cards that makes the deck function. We're going to move all this crap aside. Alright. Uh, basically, it's, it's a discard. Okay. Uh, when this card is activated, add one Uriah, Homon, or Ravigal. So basically Union Hanger. Uh, except for these guys. Uh, once per turn, you can discard one card, special summon one fiend with zero attack and defense from your graveyard. Once per turn, if you control a level 10 monster, you can add one continuous spell from your graveyard to your hand. You can only use... You can only... Activate one opening of the spirit gates per turn. Okay. And if all paradise, that's a steel spell. Uh, what did you do again? Uh, oh, okay. The, this is this is the token summoner so that you can actually get the tribute fodder necessary for this guy. Alright. Uh, what are you, what are you about? Uh, activate this card by sending your entire hand to the graveyard. Yeah. that. Uh, terraforming, set rotation. Uh, okay, that's cute. Um, one for one. That's that's actually ra rather necessary for the deck. Uh, beginning of the end, part of the desires. Uh, owner's seal. Turn all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, field barrier. Uh, hey, you know, for that mystic mind deck that I hate <laughs> with a passion. Uh, sort of. Healing light. Uh, what does M does MST negate? <laughs> the answer is no. Uh, uh, anywho, 
Uh, Awakening of the Sacred Beasts. Uh, okay, so this is the negator, I do believe. Uh, this card gains the effect based on the number of basically the three. How many of these you control? Uh, each time your opponent will normal special summon, gain life points. Okay. Uh, negate the activated effects of monster your opponent controls. Any monster. Okay, so with all three of them out, it's. It's a basically a, um, a dimensional fi dimension fissure. That's neat. Uh, and it's escape from the darker dimension. Uh, I mean, uh, Imperial Customs. Uh, mistakes were made. Uh, not with this, though. Uh, anywho, uh, Dark Factory. Uh, okay, so what do you do? I've seen I've I seen this video and Simo's video, but I didn't I don't know what it does. Um, this card is special summon, or if another monster is special summoned from the graveyard to your field, while well, you control this monster, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls and inflict damage to your opponent equal to half of that original attack. You can only use this effect of Phantasm Emperor. Yes, up uh, return. All right, and then tokens. So I've pulled aside all the cards I think will be necessary or to make this deck competent. I've swapped out some of the rarities for Duel of Saga rarities, which because I like that rarity a little bit more. But I've seen other people build this deck. I've seen other deck profiles, and a lot of them. If they are building it for competitive play, they don't think it's going to go very far. Which I kind of agree with. But, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to make it competent. Make it viable for a tournament setting. I will have that for you in the next video.